We'll come back to the second half. All right. So uh, the ship translates uh, back to the Materium. Uh, you do get word, Pondo, that uh, about um, uh, four astropaths died in the sort of last 24 hours leading up to arriving in the system from some sort of warp phenomena. Um, they, what they describe, it's sort of like... Um, so many minds are all trying to communicate at once. It's like it, it's overwhelming, overwhelming their senses, basically. Um, once you translate, straight away the ship picks up like a, like a, a klaxon sound goes off. And effectively, um, it's a proximity warning. Uh, there is a void buoy, or sorry, buoy for you Americans, um, right near where you translate out. Like not, not that it's going to collide, simply it's just it's, it's close enough that the ship picks up straight away as a near object. Um, and, uh, according to your comms officer, um, you basically get like a, a coded or a, like a, a, a pre-recorded message or a, like a written message indicating that this, uh, system is under, uh, inquisitorial interdiction and, uh, to either shen, send your ship's identification codes or depart the system straight away. Send the codes. Okay. They, uh, they, they sent that through and a moment later they say, uh, we've just received a signal back that we're apparently on the uh, okay list. Oh, that's good. As long as we're not on the uh, kill on site list, that's... No, we're, 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 we're cleared to proceed in system. Shall I take us into our orbit, Lord Commodore? Absolutely. Adrian, fly casually. <laughs> um... All right. The uh, someone give me a roll for the orders officer. Um, oh, have I closed the? I think I've, I think I've closed roll twenty. God, I'm having a shocker today. You know what's something I haven't. You want to do that, uh, Spoon? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Well, yeah, so, you, you, so it's a. Uh, it's actually a. I think it's a tech use test, but it's modified by the uh, chip's detection. So be forty plus twenty five. Can I tell him to do it better? Sure. I haven't done that in a while. So if you it's a plus thirty five then total spoon. <clears throat> nice. Uh okay, so um when you get close to the planet, um you're picking up very, very minimal size of civilization. So effectively Although the planet itself is is verdant, like it's a green world, you know, you've got oceans, you've got continents, um, you've even picking up signs of settlements. Um, so probably about total of eight total settlements, ranging in size from you know a, a slightly larger than normal village to small cities. Um, all bar one are showing up as no life signs other than just native life like you know plants or animals that sort of thing um the one that is showing uh as having life is showing minimal like you're probably talking less than 100 people total um almost not enough to really register on the augers uh but that is the city with the um uh with the spaceport as well or with the with the you know landing platforms that you can put the gun cutter down onto Bit, you've received no communications from the surface. <laughs> so should we, you know, talk to them? Let them know why we've shown up? Yes, Vachtmaster, please hail them. If possible. All right. Um, yeah, we're getting a signal. And uh, momentary later, a uh, face appears on the screen. Looks like a man, probably late 20s, wearing like a, an administration uniform. Or you know, effectively what you would expect a Vox operator at a planetary spaceport to be wearing. Uh, we're receiving you, Hannah Calixis. What's your business here? Uh, me and my senior crew would like to come see the facility. Maybe possibly see if there's a squad or near us holding up a whiteboard that has the words recruitment in quotation marks <laughs> see if i might be able to Heroes find got, a, his, got his cue cards squad yeah. a small squad of sisters to recruit for my efforts 
Uh, yes, I, we have your author, we have your Inquisitor authorization here. Uh, Inquisitor? Something like that, yes. All right. Um, you're cleared to land. Um, we must ask, though, that as part of our quarantine, um, no psychers uh, are allowed on the planet's surface. Nero holds up a cue card that says nulls question mark. I love I love the idea that Nero holds Nero's up like, like five of them because we have a whole ship full of nulls that followed us here. <laughs> the, like but Nero's like in like in in the ca- and like in the camera, it's just it's just back. So yeah. it's just... <laughs> why why no psychers allowed? Uh it's dangerous for them. The I would explain very well. I have some issues with some uh, astropaths that we're encountering on the right on the way here. Nero's just flipping through cards. Each one of them says nulls at this point. <laughs> How did he know to write so many null cards? <laughs> I knew the Lord Captain would ignore this exact moment. <laughs> we'll be sending a uh, gun cutter down with, along with me and my senior staff and the other crew that it needs to be on it. Very well. Uh, we will have the Palatine meet you at the landing platform. Excellent. All right, he cuts the comms. Ooh. I'm always here, by the way, in case you were wondering. Arthur. Yeah, I know. No, no. We know. Yes, we know. Lord Captain, you know, I was thinking perhaps you might have wanted to talk about the nulls <laughs> Given all the psycho problems in this system, you just implied that we had some psycho problems a minute ago. There's this the, the, this area is not a null problem. It's a, a big warpy problem. I think perhaps what um, yeah, it's just like I, I you insinuating <laughs> no, that I should big try warpy to sell problem. Them? Literally the same thing. No, no, Lord Captain, I don't want you to sell them. I just want to make sure that bringing a null down to the planet's surface won't cause something to explode. You remember the planet full of nulls was causing Riani in te- she literally fired an eye beam burst into the side of Charlemagne Arbellum's ship. I just want. If there's already warp problems, I'm not sure bringing nulls with us would be a good idea. We may want to have them back off. Just leave the cades and then the... Leave the cades? Sir, he's a... He's a growing young boy who requires exercise and rest and and outdoor air. And, and, you know, he needs to socialize with people. He's bad at it. This is the worst place you could decide to have him socialize with. An inquisitorial fortress? They're very good at talking to people. So I would say, say too good. good. Yeah, I was going to say there's literally no one better. However, indeed, if Leave they know here. we have nulls, they might want to acquire them for themselves. But we have inquisitorial authorization. They All right. Seem, well, they I'll seem leave, to think so. I'll leave Kate on the boat then. Have the Eternal Praetorium keep a decent distance away from the planet. Okay, no problem. We, the, what we do is we tell them to fly casual. <laughs> That's how you make yourself look suspicious. <laughs> Go slightly the under the speed of... limit as soon as the cop starts calling you. <laughs> <laughs> the equivalent of a spaceship leaning against a, uh, a pillar trying to look incognito. <clears throat> I'll go, so who, I'll go prepare the gun cutter. So who other than the four of you is, is actually going to the surface? I think it's the four of you, us, and then whatever crew is necessary for the uh, gun cutter. That'll be Adrian. I didn't know. Uh, didn't we also need like, oh, a tech so priest it's, it's in there? A tech priest, yeah. Tech priest, yeah. That's right. That'd be the only other one. Okay. Cool. All right. So you guys board the gun cutter. Um, as you fly into the planet, um, yeah, it, it looks like it's a quite a nice earth-like planet you know the the, the it's temperate um it's quite breathable um 
as you sort of overfly the main city, you can see that it's probably uh, it's, not, it's not huge. You're talking like Dayton, Ohio sort of size. Um, but still, you know, it's got all the regular facilities you'd expect, a spaceport, an administratum tower. With that being said, it's clearly fallen into some disrepair. You know, the, the, the wilderness has overtaken the city somewhat. So, you know, there's place where weeds or trees have grown through the asphalt. Um, you've got also what looks like signs of battle damage. So you can definitely see like scorch marks on buildings where shells have detonated. Uh, all sorts of signs of, of past and actually probably recent battles as well. Like there's probably still a few things that are like, there's a couple of little fires burning just in among the rubble as well. Well, that's um, not a good sign. The only the only building which appears to be relatively well maintained is what is clearly some sort of church or preceptory type building um, just outside the town. Um, and as you land, you can see a couple of uh, red painted rhinos uh, heading from the, the preceptory to the to the spaceport. They they bear they bear the white fleur de lis of the Adeptus Sororitas as well. Not given that uh, they said a Palantine was meeting with us. Yeah, that sounds right. right. Uh, so when you set down, um, the two riders have pulled up. Uh, there are probably uh, four women wearing the armor of the Sororitas, um, one of which is a woman probably in her early 50s, although her hair is, is gray. Like her, her hair looks older than the rest of her, basically. She looks otherwise quite fit, but her hair has gone quite gray um, and, and is, is long and a bit sort of scraggly. Um but she, her, her markings indicate her as a palatine, so a high-ranking member of the Sorotas. Still below, obviously, a canon S, but um, certainly still a, a, probably the leader of this preceptory anyway. Um, and there's, there's also like a few menials, like porters probably, people that are here expecting to carry things, basically. No, well, lucky for them, we don't have a lot of things to carry. Oh, yeah. foolish move, Don. <laughs> of course we brought merch. We're here to sell stuff to a community that rarely receives visitors. I'm thinking the I Heart the God Emperor mugs and t-shirts are going to go crazy here. They don't have this level of cultural technology. Yeah, so I have the porters take our huge, massive footlockers filled with well, so, so, As you come down the ramp, the Palatine steps forward, makes a sign of the Aquila and, and bows. Uh, welcome to Abandoned Hope, Inquisitor. I am Palatine Kalia of the Order of the Bloody Rose. Pleasure to meet you. I am Commodore Pierre Cowles, and this is my entourage. Come to see the church. Yes, we have prepared transport to take you to the uh, preceptory. Please, uh, this, the second rhino awaits you. Excellent. Pierre starts walking over that way. No worries. It's very lovely they, here. L lovely here. Very lived in. <laughs> what do you mean, the rhino or the or the town? <laughs> the town. <laughs> but that battle royale kind of vibe. I like that. Uh, we use the town for uh, our training operations for uh, novice sisters. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, she sort of like eyes dawn um, curiously for a moment as, as as you sort of approach and get on. Like there's. Definitely something about Dawn. You don't you don't get the sign of like a recognition. She doesn't know you. You don't know her, but mm -hmm. she's interested to see uh, you in this company anyway. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my my garb is like the exact opposite colors of hers. So I oh, know she knows um, she's not, not her, but she recognizes you're from the Sororitas anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, so she sends the rest of her team in her rhino, and she basically boards yours, so she can talk to you on the way back to the. Well, that's probably going to be like a fifteen minute drive back to the Perceptor anyway. You're just going to pull Adrian aside and have a quiet conversation about how ill it bodes that the Inquisition, a notoriously paperwork-heavy organization, is allowing the area to be overrun by nature. Just mm -hmm. quietly talking. Yeah. Well, they're... Are you insinuating that they should turn this nature into paper for paperwork? No, that we should reclaim the land with a crusade. The land's being used as training grounds. She just said that. Yes, but we should... 
<laughs> we should recover it. It needs to look yeah. good. We, sh- can... we should be training with Agent Orange, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to look good for all the tourists that they allow here, right? No, it was just like, we. it could look nice, you know. All right, I'll wait until I see the church. All right, everybody just give me a... Hmm. You can roll your best of either awareness or willpower. Oh, great. It's going to definitely be awareness. <laughs> Still gonna fail it though. They are the same. <laughs> wow, did you roll a 100? He, he Incredible. 100, yes. Wow. I'm tempted to leave it. I'm gonna re roll. I'll re roll. Uh... That's truly incredible, Pondo. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need my. Um... Nope, what, I would, I, would I just look like an idiot as I was just blissfully unaware? <laughs> that what my, <laughs> my critical failure would be. <laughs> Uh, so spoon, um, every now and again, um, as like, cause, cause there's, there's some wind blowing through cause this, this, this town's built into like a valley basically. And so you get, you get some natural wind through and you almost get this sense that there are like whispers on the wind. Like you think you hear voices, but anytime you try to sort of, every time you try to narrow them down, just like sort of make them out of here, what they're saying that, you know, the sensation passes, but you know, it, it gets you more than once enough that you sort of feel that there is something. It's not just your mind playing tricks on you. There is something odd about this place that the uh, you, you're, you're picking up these whispers. This is also oh, the guy who had the blood vision. <laughs> oh, we haven't seen the effects effects yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is very <laughs> ironic. Yeah, it, it feels like my my, my cyberpunk bug, which let me get me the the, uh, the whispers from that uh, uh, horror <laughs> cyber psycho <laughs> thing for like the next <laughs> half hours of the game. <laughs> 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 Subscribe um, to AP Gaming Real on Patreon. <laughs> Great, we know an ASMR stream. Um, so she, uh, as you're writing, she's down. Um, I wasn't aware of. Well, I, I didn't know that they were still allowing new inquisitors into the Tarotin Cabal. I well, I'd say I was a special exception. It's kind of hard to explain, to be honest. Does this mean that things have escalated again with the with the tyrant star? At least not at the moment. <laughs> I think Pierre kind of like who is this? The Palatine? Yes. Yes. Okay. What do you know about the tyrant star? <laughs> I've been studying it my whole life. Here is a 40 page <laughs> dissertation. Uh, I mean, I, I know of his existence, which is more than most people in the Imperium. This preceptory was set up by uh, Inquisitor Zerb. I served Zerb many years ago um, in my early days in this sector. I've served uh, the Inquisition for since then for some time, but. Um, yeah, this this particular uh, preceptory is designed to train uh, sisters with particular with a particular skill set. Uh, but as I said, we are here at the um, pleasure of uh, Lord Inquisitor Zerb, so we are aware of the Tyrantine Cabal's uh, mandate, but not necessarily its day to day actions, as is, as is evidenced by our lack of knowledge of your recruitment. Who was it that told us this place existed? Was it Dawn? Dawn. Through her... Forbidden Law Inquisition. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, I mean, to, to the rest of the Imperium, it's just a ban. It's just a, a, a sanctioned world, probably some sort of... Like, the, the official records are probably that it's a dangerous place to come to and therefore stay away. That seemed like a dangerous place to come to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you'll find that everything is in the uh, preceptories as you would expect. Uh, she is like pulls out a like a pocket chrono and looks at it like she pulls out of like a like mm. a belt pouch and looks at it. Um, the next reading should be in about twenty two minutes, so I should prepare for that. But you're welcome to to oversee if you wish. Excellent, should be lovely sight to see. What particular skills were you speaking of that they're, they're being trained here for? Uh. Well, particularly, um, oh my we God. provide... This Sorry. is our episode two Camino moment where we get all of the Django fets. 
Yeah, oh, surely you're not inquisitive to cipher deer sit this up now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Strangely, instead of money, he only wanted one battle sister in his image. Um, I have specialized in training those sisters who would at least temporarily serve inquisitors directly. I mean, the sororitas are the chamber militant of both the ecclesiarchy and the order hereticus, but uh as she indicates towards dawn as i'm sure you know there are sisters who if only temporarily join the service of inquisitors directly and so um based upon my experience i provide them with the necessary training to perform that role as best they can interesting i'll admit though i have not seen a lot of hospitalized join inquisitors but based upon the arms and armor that you carry it seems that you have progressed well beyond your uh, your mean sister oh well, i started as a simple hospitaler but the nature of the void has turned me into somewhat more of a combatant than a, than someone who will simply heal the wounded hmm. well as I'm sure Zerb would attest, I think that combatants are what we need more of now anyway. All right, the the one that pulls to a halt yeah. inside the, the yard of the preceptory. Um, will you be staying here every night, Inquisitor? I don't think so. I would would hate to impede. Very well. We will. If you need accommodations prepared, please let me know. But uh. Keep in mind, our accommodations here are um, Spartan. We don't normally receive guests, as I'm sure you can imagine. As I team, can definitely imagine. Do you have a commissary or gift shop or quartermastery? Be <laughs> <laughs> just size. I have, we have a we have a quartermaster or a quarter, a quarter mistress, of course. And that person, you can point me to their office. Uh. Yes, the armor. She gives you directions to the armory. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> what are you gonna trade for, Arthur? <laughs> don't worry, I'll it's get not... there. <laughs> don't don't get in trouble, Nero. Nero turns to look scandalously at the Lord Captain. Like me? Yes, you. So the rest of you, she leads to a side of the preceptory where there is like a chapel nave. Um, so clearly in the light of this place, it has a central domed chapel and she is not taking you to the main chapel. She's taking you to like a side chapel. Um, with that being said, once you enter, it looks like this chapel is well used. Uh, in fact, the sisters in here praying right now, either in robes or in their armor. Um, she basically has, you know, effectively a table to put to one side where there's like drinks and refreshments and some some basic food put out. Um, she says, oh, "I I must prepare for the reading. Um, you can um, uh, freshen up and pray if you need. Uh, Sister Euphrati here will bring you to the main chapel in time for the reading." Very well, and thank you. Then okay, so the Palatine leaves. Um, is there any sort of like? Can I make any sort of role here to understand whether or not there there's some sort of, like? You mentioned it was the blood rose, the, right? The Order of the Bloody Rose. Yes. Yeah. Is that a uh, a, a sect that I would under, uh, know of? Yeah. Or? So so it's one of the, it's one of the main orders of the Septa okay. Sororitas. Um, what makes them, I, I guess, what, what, what defines them as different from the rest yeah. is that they have a very close combat focus. Whereas right. most, most sisters are sort of more, I mean, they're obviously trained with how to use chainsaws and that, you know, the average sister only carries a bolt gun. Um, the combat doctrine of the bloody rose is very, um, close combat focused. I see. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so AP, uh, you find a small building, which is marked as the armory. 
Um, when you enter, there is a um, elderly sister who uh, is like, looks like she probably is no longer battle ready because of injury. Like she has a cybernetic leg um, and her, one of her arms has not been replaced, but it is badly sort of um, mangled to the point she hasn't got full, full range of movement in her elbow. Um, but she's currently inspecting bolt rifles and handing out to a group of sisters who are obviously about to go out on some sort of training operation. I wait for um, that to finish. No worries. She has a she has a um, head sort of like an undercut, like she's shaved on one side, but then like has longer hair tossed over that, almost like um, Judy in Cyberpunk. Mm. Um, but uh, her hair is mostly grey though, so there's no sort of like the the punk is lost by having you know el- elderly grey hair, but. Uh, it's just a way. Mm, I, no. it sounds like I think, the punk is still alive. Yeah, I was gonna say. Good, so. I think Rogue proves that the punk is still alive. Mm-hmm. Betty White proves the punk is still alive. You can't take <laughs> it away, man. You don't even have to have the cyber in it. Yeah, Nero just waits patiently. Yeah. Uh, once the um, the other women all leave, um, she turns you away. Can I help you? No. I've come here to help you. Okay. See, see, like, <laughs> no, you guys are lunch. all making it fucking weird. <laughs> she starts to like, you know, put things away while listening. It's like, okay, well, go. Okay, she's she's. This is obviously like one of those things where it's like, okay, this could quickly turn something where I want you to go away quickly. Is this like a door knocking type thing? So she starts to busy herself while listening. So would you be, be interested in the... knives or vacuum cleaners, my yeah, lady? The, the moment the moment you say timeshare, she's going to find something else to do. But you know, but she's listening to what you're saying right now. I'm uh, Sister Superior Brigitte. <clears throat> Gosh, you know, I get the feel. Remember when? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you're one and a, you're zero and a one for fucking dealing Scaring with old elderly. ladies. <laughs> yeah, the one that <laughs> scared with Miriam. So I get the same feeling from uh, from her that I got from the last one, but this one actually seems to be somewhat more battle scarred uh, and isn't standing in my way to get something I want. So I say, Sister Superior Brigitte, I believe that my comrades during our mission here are going to remove some of your contingent of your faithful. And the Lord Captain has brought tokens to, if not replace the hearts, then at least to bolster the remaining hearts. Items of faith, like these mugs and this t-shirt and this cookware, all of which you can see is being provided to you at no cost. Thank you for your service. These novelty rosaries. (laughs) She, she like she picks up one of the mugs and inspects it. Like you, you get the impression she's expecting its serviceability as a mug. You're not even sure if she actually reads the writing on the side, but she sort of you know nods. Uh, these will be useful. Yes, we can use the ceramic in making battle armor plates. <laughs> <laughs> Makeshift knives. <laughs> Yes, yeah, right, we have that. this. We have this special thing where we need thirty pounds of ceramic a day for each system. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. We don't talk about it. <laughs> we uh, we don't regularly get resupplied. So Luxury is, goods, uh, yes, I expect it as such. You are somewhat distant to get to. You're here with the Inquisitor. I am here with the Lord Commodore. She sort of looks curiously at you, but then shrugs off. (laughs) Yeah, Nero doesn't feel the need to explain any further. He's definitely not going to call him an Inquisitor, because he's not, as far as any of us know. Um, But this is your chance to make a secret handshake that only the Inquisitors know that she wouldn't be able to realize is not an Inquisitor handshake. I'm not an Inquisitor, so there's no way I would know that. (laughs) But you can make one up. That's the best part. Teach it to her. Sister Superior, we ask nothing in return for this. Is there anything this outpost requires to maintain its critical functions? Or even luxury items you might request on our next pass-through? Uh, well, we're short on um, we're short on bolt rounds. Uh, I'm trying to um, limit our usage right now. Uh, also, um, melter packs 
as in melted melted charges, not the melted bombs. We've got melted bombs, but the actual um, reloads for the melted weapons is. Uh, Don't we literally have a metric fuck ton of guns on board? <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, we have a shit ton of las guns. Yeah, we have las guns. <clears throat> well, the las guns come with melted packs, right? No, 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 no that's power, power cells. Power oh, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Right. Uh, like we we have like I have melted a melted gun that has a melted pack, but mm. okay. We have done some arms trading. I believe that we may be able to bring such things back. With whom would we negotiate with? Uh, the Palatine is in charge here. I would suggest that uh, you we speak with her. And if I was looking for someone of faith and great wisdom, with whom to pray with and ask questions yes, of. Yes, the Palatine. <laughs> I would not presume to take the Palatine's time the whole day unless she is the truly the one that you believe. No, no every um, every sister here is uh, is faithful, but the Palatine um, she would not have been given this role were it not for her her past deeds uh, in service of the Inquisition and the God Emperor. Um, she is a woman of great faith and, uh, and huge dedication. The only, some feel uh, that her task here, uh, while it is in the Emperor's name, uh, it makes some feel uncomfortable and thus they would not necessarily choose to take prayer with her. But I would, happily lay down my life for Kalia and uh, I would treat her as a sister in every way. Thank you for your service. That's a, uh, a nice heavy bolter, by the way. Solar pattern, yes? Yes. Its name is One. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see uh, many of those in the sector but, it's uh, not from the sector it has come a long way to get here i mean you can see she has heavy bolters hanging on the wall behind yeah. her as well but yeah. I mean, he, he's like a little possessive yeah. of it because you know yeah. it's got the angelique cows dangly on the back of it it's got the grav lift <laughs> on it the omniscope no the omniscope is on his shoulder mounted oh, gun, okay. which he's not currently wearing yep he didn't feel the need to uh, bring the Omniscope to to a, fr a totally friendly Inquisitorial fortress. Oh uh, yeah, friendly Inquisitorial is not a well, sentence that go works I mean, well. Maybe for the rest of you, he actually has Inquisitorial authorization. Um, he's not afraid to be here. He's just afraid someone might say, "Oh, Agent Nero," in front of Adrian and Dawn. <laughs> um yes i prefer its use i actually have inquisitorially sanctioned organ grinder rounds they have yet to serve me well but on many battlefields this particular weapon has killed i even dispatched a several chaos agents necrons and was even taking part in a uh Somewhat faithless space marine, Death Watch space marine who had lost his faith. She, uh, wait, wait, she, she like puts up her hand and say, "Wait there a moment." And she walks over to a um, a locker and opens it up and um, pulls out a uh, a heavy bolter um, uh, clip, basically, or magazine um, for you. Uh, you, you she brings it over and sort of like like holds it against like like close to your gun, seeing if it would seeing it seeing it would fit the same mechanism, seeing if whether the um it would be compatible. Uh, when she's when she seems confident, she offers it to you. A what? gift. What is for, it exactly? Uh, so it's it's a it's a magazine, but it's it's full of rounds. You can see it's full of rounds. I ask, what what is this? Uh, bless bolts. These are quite rare. There is another Sorry. among our number that may be able to put these to better use than I. I cannot say I am worthy of these. 
Uh, well, the uh, it sounds like you fight the legions of chaos. A these lot, bolts were, so many. These, these bolts were blessed for that for that purpose, and here. Um, oh, we did kill a they, demon they, a couple of days ago. That was pretty cool. So, in game terms, AP these would ignore demonic toughness bonus. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what they are, James. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Nero, a sing, it's a single clip. Yeah, so. Nero doesn't know, but um, thank you. I will see to it that the next time I encounter a demon, its death is somewhat more elongated than normal. That gives them pleasure. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, it's better for them to take longer to come back here. Oh, you, okay. That's what I mean. I mean, they're going to be sleeping for a while in Chaos Zone. I thought you were going to make their death slow and painful, which no, is what I they mean, want. Only like, Slaneshi oh, yeah, demons. I... <laughs> Eight tips. Number seven will, will confuse all Slaneshi demons. Um... Yeah, Nero's going to take it with somewhat somber sacredness and uh, place it in one of his many ammo pouches and say, I hope to use this at the right time in the right place. Thank you, Sister Superior Bridget. Screen wipe. Yeah, that's right. Okay, back in the main, uh, or sorry, in the off, off cathedral, um, Sister Euphrates comes to you. Uh, the time has come for the, the reading, if you wish to join me. Absolutely. Like, while okay. while we're walking there, <clears throat> yep. uh, Adrian will say in Rogue Trader Camp, do either of you know or have any idea what this reading is? Mm, can I make a roll or something, like an Ecclesiarchy roll, maybe, perhaps? Uh, no, you, you, it's, it's, it, it would have been covered by the, by the results of your forbidden law inquisition role for this planet previously. So, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I guess some sort of training exercise or just some sort of religious thing. Oh. Uh, I get the feeling that something terrible happened on this planet involving the warp. Oh, no doubt. Just that, um, you know, hairs on the back of your neck rising up feeling. Well, I will say this to you both. The sisters of battle and the hospitals as well tend to be forged on difficult circumstances. Um, you cannot progress forward or progress through life without facing numerous difficulties yourself and those who shy away from them are obviously not fit to wear the cloth so having a training ground on a on a realm like this makes sense i suppose you're right don how can you train to be in scary hell blasted deathlands unless you literally live on a scary hell blasted deathland for your whole life uh, when you get to the, the door of the main cathedral, um, Euphrates turns to you. Uh, once you're inside, please remain silent during the reading and please do not enter the, the circle. So stand outside the circle. Yep, this um, is going to be some work. <laughs> she, she opens the door and once you step inside, like there is a palpable sense of... You, you've experienced it before, like when the temperature drops several degrees because of something warp influenced. Um, yeah, and straight away, the three of you all hear these whispered voices in the air, even though there's no sort of airflow in here. It's like there's these whispers echoing around this this open dome cathedral. Um, in the very center of the cathedral, so there's no there's no pews, there's no sort of setup where you can actually use this as a place of worship. Instead, it's been cleared, and the very center is a marble plinth, um, about four feet tall, above which floats a completely jet black sphere. Um, floats about a, about a foot off the top of the pedestal. Um, it seems to just absorb all light, so there's no you can you can't make any texture to it. It's just like a hole in reality um, where this, this sphere sits. Uh, it so looks familiar to something that we've seen before. Because I remember sure. seeing something with the Eldar that there was like a black 
Hall or something like that, or a Sphere or something. No? I don't, okay. I don't recall specifically, so it's unrelated to this, if, they, if it was. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, so around, probably about, about 10 feet out from the plinth uh, and around it are 13 circularly arrayed um, blessed uh, Aquila statues all pointing inwards towards the sphere. And then in between each of the 13 um, statues is 12 battle sisters, all with bolt, go bolt guns drawn pointed at the sphere. Um, Palatine Kalia is standing just outside the circle's edge and uh, silently Euphrates sort of directs you to where you can stand and watch. Um, Kalia checks the chrono again and um, you realise that this, she's doing this basically on, on the planetary hour. Um, she steps into the circle, uh, approaches to within touching distance of the sphere. Um, she then says five words. The five words, I mean, I, I, I had to make them up, but they're, they're not so much relevant. It's like, imagine you were just reading five words of any book, you know, in the middle of a sentence, you know, and, you know, and then we went to um, something like on those lines. Um, I mean, it, you, the impression you get is like, it, it is speaking in the uh, the first person. We, we is the, um, it's I here. So it, it's in the first person, whatever it's, whatever the text is. But she reads, it says, says five words aloud, obviously part of some greater text. And then the the sense of wrongness in the room sort of dies down. The, um, the voice is quiet. They don't fully go away. Um, and the temperature sort of, you know, gets back to a more pleasant, no, or, or more like the outside temperature. Um, then she steps away and um, comes to the outside of the circle. Seeing you all there, she like gesticulates for you to leave, like come outside the cathedral with her. Okay. You will step outside. <clears throat> At this point, probably Nero is coming back from the from the armory when you see the other three and the Palatine step outside the cathedral. I take it that everything was what you expected with the ritual or with the reading inquisitor uh, out, of, out of care there was no was it shooting or anything no no they, shooting no shooting they okay. did, even even after you finished they, the the 12 on guard still kept their bolters trained on the orb yes S this reading what what is it entailing other than maybe calling some sort of beast uh, well, this is how we keep Medina's orb from growing in strength. I simply recite the rantings of the navigator. Oh, so, Inquisitor, uh, you're you're across this whole matter, are you? That's why I figured you'd come here. It was just brought to my attention that this place was here, so I decided to come see while I was in the area. Oh, well, we stop by for a day trip because we're yes. fucking noobs. <laughs> you must be. You must be confused. Then sorry, I, I apologize. Um, please join me in. In um, uh, let's, let's go into one of the other halls and we can talk further about this. Medina's orb is that what she called it? Yes. We need like something with that, right? We, we've done something with that. That's, it's familiar to me as well. Like it's. I, I'll, I'll take forbidden law, inquisition, or um, common law, coronas expanse. Okay, uh, I'll roll no. forbidden law, inquisition. I don't have uh, common law, coronas expanse. So. Mm, forbidden law, inquisition. I will do that. Oh, yep. I do have common law, coronas anyway. expanse. Is that minus anything for coronas expanse? No, it's just right roll. I'm saving all my rolls for the the inevitable charm roll that will come. <laughs> uh, I'll re-roll that. And I don't think I have either of those, so. Uh, yeah, I'll re-roll. Why not? No. Oh. No. <laughs> the second wow, one one failure. I, I, did you like take a sniff of cocaine or something like that uh, before you, you came you, down you, here? You, you were just about to remember it, then suddenly the aneurysm burst and that, that, that party memory is just gone. No, no. <laughs> it's, this is to make up for all the good roles for the acquisitions. The yeah, when we got all the gear. Yes. This is the karma so, coming back. 
Nero, with your 0.1 degree success, you have heard that um, there was an Inquisitor named Medina who um, was actually exploring the Coronas Expanse quite early on. Um, well, I say early on, like still in the, like, in the last generation, so probably about 30 years ago, you heard okay. that there was an Inquisitor Medina that was exploring the Coronas Expanse, but you don't not sure what became of him yeah. or her. You don't really know. Right. I keep it to myself. So you go sit somewhere with the with the Palatine. Uh so the reading, yes. Um when I was much younger, I was with a group of sisters that were assigned to Inquisitor Medina during one of his early trips into the Coronet Expanse. We uh found a uh, an abandoned vessel of the Eldar um, in the Hecaton Rift. We were in pursuit of a Eldar raiding party that had caused some problems for the um, the Imperium at the time for some of the early explorers. Uh, on board the vessel, um, the Inquisitor gave orders to never speak of what actually happened on board the vessel, but what I will say is that we lost a lot of the sisters that we came with. I was one of the few survivors. And when we left, we brought with us uh, the orb and a human navigator who had been driven mad during his time in captivity with the with the Eldar. Um, he ranted about planets orbiting a sun that didn't burn. Um, he screamed of secrets that he had no way of knowing um, but were confirmed by Medina and other agents of the Inquisition. Um, we brought him back to the Calixa sector and he seemed to take some liking to me. Uh, and so I did my best for a time to try and coax what I could from the navigator, learn about what had happened to him. Um, unfortunately, um, his mind was too far gone. And at a point, I simply had to end his suffering. Um, unfortunately, after he died, the orb seemed to begin growing in power. Uh, but I learned that by reciting the, the words of his, uh, um, of his, rantings before the before the orb it would seem to quell it for a time perhaps that's why he continued to rant even after he was uh, released zerb made the decision to clear this world of its of its uh, imperial outpost and establish this base here to a keep the orb away from the rest of the imperium while he further studied it but also to act as a um a training station as well Every every seven hours, I have to read or recite five uh, five words from the litany of the Mad Navigator. Um, it takes roughly seventeen days to go through the full passage. Are you the only one that can speak these words to the orb? Uh, I mean, they're recorded. I, I've memorized them. I've always been the one to take this duty because there is the idea that knowledge in itself corrupts. And so um, the thought is that as long as no one else should have to memorize this while there is someone willing to carry that torch. Obviously, if something's happened to me, one of the other sisters here would take that up. But I have sworn an oath to never again leave this planet. So while the, the issue... Is still a threat. So obviously the warp that's manifesting here is, is that orb the essentially the catalyst the epicenter yes i mean the training the training facility i mean we full, maintain a we maintain a perceptor here in case something goes wrong but we ensure that that time is used by the sisters here to hone their skills prepare for their future engagement in many ways i think that well according to what medina told me and then what zerb later confirmed the orb was something that was once sought by the nefarious villain Erasmus Harlock. And uh, with his line extinguished, oh it's possible the, uh, <laughs> the orb will uh, 
remain here doing nothing other than requiring a, a constant guard until the end of the end of time. Yo, you is know, this one of those key items that yeah, you I'm gonna say get season for three, RPG we come back yeah. to steal the orb. Yeah. Do you know um it's time for a time heist, guys? Do you know why Erasmus Harlock sought the orb? It's not not knowledge I've ever disdained to pervert my mind with. Medina Is believed there any it. knowledge of it Medina. available here? Uh, no, we're not a we're not a we're not, we're not here for storing knowledge. We are here for training combat skills. You are not. Fair good. enough. <laughs> I really like the idea that our idea of our highest to be like, hey, you're looking tired. Why don't you go take a nap? He's like, you know what? I am feeling tired. She goes take a sleep. We just like grab the orb and just walk yes. out. <laughs> put, a, put a sack over it. Like... Uh, or we could just ask for it. Nero to <laughs> look it at with, a, with a marble hanging from the ceiling. Because <laughs> <clears throat> uh, at the words that this is a battle outpost, not a knowledge reservoir, that's perfect for what Don needs. I thought we knew that before we came here, though. Yeah, but, we did. you know, who knows with <laughs> sisters, right? They could be like, yeah, we're a battle outpost. What we battle is all this paperwork. <laughs> yeah, we're actually a library. <laughs> yeah, we live in the Imperium. You know that, right? Their scars like, come from paper are, cuts. Are, oh, yeah, we just showed up to a police station where they hold people in 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 the factory. <laughs> I think there's, a, there's like a Grey Knights <laughs> novel where the main character shows up at this battle sisters place and it's like so, so you guys are gonna help me fight right and they're like we're a bunch of scribes dude <laughs> <laughs> our only instruments of death are these knitting needles that we that we weave the tapestry of life from. <laughs> the inquisitor said that the pen is mightier than the sword we've lived our whole life for those words Ten what you generations <laughs> It's what you're getting when you're pistols pods. are actually water guns that we point at that orb every time it opens. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the equivalent of like, you know, when you go to like like North Korea or whatever, and it's like, hey, check out all these cool supermarkets we have with all these happy citizens, <laughs> except they just pretend to be like <laughs> battles. Since when someone checks up. <laughs> Someone's coming down. Light, light the, light the fake fires. <laughs> so I, uh, I turn to the the Palatine and say, "This is all very interesting, but if what you said is true, <laughs> that you need to read five words every seven hours, and there are seventeen days, that's only two hundred ninety-one words. That's." like one page the mad rantings of the navigator are one single page of words i mean this is a person who was repeating the same things over and over again okay yeah all right so that that, that is a record of every separate thing he would he would continu continually repeat sounds like he didn't have a lot to say mm. but what he did say seems to be important why do you call yes. him the navigator if he was an inquisitor no, no, the oh, navigator he, would. The, the navigator would be found up. on the Eldar vessel. Uh, ah, yeah. I see now. Yes. Yeah. I got that mixed up. All yes. right. Is this place needing of many supplies at the moment? I don't. You're just going to cough. I need yes, a drink I of think water, that... Nero. We haven't received ammunition in some time. The quartermaster, so the quartermistress could give you details on what exactly we require. Nero holds out a piece of paper with those details already ready. <laughs> you were like, we need a new quest item. And Nero's like, no, nope, I already did that one. <laughs> no, I'm just yes, trying to our fourth diversion. <laughs> Is this one of those things where, like, you go to fit, you go to take the quest, but you already have the item? Yes, and it's just that's like... exactly what it is. <laughs> it's like... Skyrim to me. Can you please go get the skull of iniquity? And it's like, oh, you mean this one? <laughs> it's, it's, it's essentially in Skyrim. There's there's a quest with the, the very claws. the very first thing yeah, where you get like the, the claw, the golden claw, right at the start yeah. before you go ask for it. Yeah. Or uh, there's another case where it's like the amulet Talos quest where you can get like a random amulet amulet Talos and be like, I need to get my amulet back. Uh, here, where'd you get this? I don't want to ask. <laughs> Not from your brother. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, <clears throat> it seems that they're requiring ammunition. Bolt rounds, melter packs. They're working on rationing. Palatine. This is an inquisitorial outpost. And we are, of course, a merchant fleet. Do you have the kind of throne funding that would uh, be required for such a large ammunition shipment? I mean, Zerb is our is our um, patron. Yes, we'll, we'll bill him. Yeah, I've obviously mm. requested these these resources, but we're still waiting on. Any are sort we of... confident that we can invoice him for these supplies, Palatine? I mean, according to, I mean, you 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 serve in the Tarantine Cabal, according to your ship's records, so. Nero just stone faces her. He's <laughs> he's not going to say anything to dissuade her. <clears throat> it's the point where Nero learns that maybe I need a shush. Is there? Uh, any he did reason? shush. What are you saying? He is shushing. <laughs> no, I'm saying this is when this is when Nero figures out that he needs to shush. Is there any reason that you know of Palantine that you haven't been resupplied yet? Uh, look, I mean, it takes a while. For, I, I don't figure we're a high priority in the Lord Inquisitor's actions, so it often takes some time for them to find a ship. It's it's not would not be the first time that we have switch to using las rounds for training while waiting for bolt bolt rounds to be resupplied i'll speak with zerb see what i can do to get some sort of uh, essentially push the order a bit thank you inquisitor uh I just think it's like, are there any squads of five sisters that are available that you can? Oh, don't do this while Dave isn't here. And why limit yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah, to five? Gotta... He wanted like 25. Yeah, we got like to a... get like a, a full, you know. Yeah. We don't like want to be too greedy. 10 sisters, 15 sisters. I can sisters. wait for Dave. 30 sisters, you know. All right, so Nero's going to cut <laughs> in and say Palatine. Uh, yes. Is there someone I can speak with on matters of faith and spirituality? I have several questions that have been troubling me as a man of the faith, faithiness. Yep, they know Nero the Faithful, that's what they call me. <laughs> and um, I was hoping to speak with a expert in such matters, someone with wisdom. Uh, I would be more than happy to take whatever confession or provide of whatever guidance you require i oh fantastic let's I, I, arrange I mean, that yeah i, I mean, mean obviously i'm not going to do it here with it. my entire crew around <laughs> but <laughs> if we could speak privately later yep so of course so uh, our lord captain brought down some supplies for your people uh shirts mugs silverware dishware all of which is branded and sourced by our people, made locally on board our ships, at no cost to you. Many of it says things like, I love the God Emperor. Just wanted to let you know in case you started seeing merch popping up all across the Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> the generosity of our fleet. Oh, Don, you're back. Wow, let's do that thing. <laughs> Okay, so as you know, uh, we have come to this planet seeking recruitment. Uh, a crew of battle sisters that would be very helpful to join the ranks of the. Uh, uh, this is a, this is a dumb question, uh, James. What is it? What is the likelihood of battle sisters from the Bloody Rose? like being okay with the ideology of another sect of the ecclesiarchy oh man they I mean, love sex it, it, I mean, it's all it's all <laughs> little variations on the key religion you know so that they that, that there's no reason they have any issue with with following you okay yeah. um so then i'll say uh we i would like to staff a small squad of 
elite battle sisters with the intent of cleansing heretics under the under the guise of the cleansing or uh, order of the cleansing flame uh may i propose a slight alternative you may Within this preceptory, um, we were recently um, provided a squad of Sisters Repentia. So for your benefit, Dave, these are <laughs> sisters <laughs> who have committed some, um, some act that they wish to atone for. Um, so usually these are things like cowardice or um, allowing you know, an, an artifact to be captured by the enemies of chaos. Anything like that effectively. So, so something that doesn't warrant death straight away, but requires atonement. But the general view of the Sister Repentia is that it's extremely rare that they would ever be returned to full status. More that, you know, the, the idea would be that they will wash their, that they will atone for their sins by dying in the cauldron of battle. Um, so these are, so basically we're making a black squad. Cool. I like it. Yeah. Um, so they, they don't wear the armor of the sororitas. They don't carry bolt guns. They carry eviscerators, which are basically two handed chain swords and they throw themselves, you know, viciously into battle, you know, uh, effectively trying to kill as many of the enemy before their own, before that, you know, death takes them in redemption, basically. Um, so the, the, my issue, so this is going back to what she's saying. My issue of course is that these women will never find the redemption they seek here on a training world um they need to be in battle against the arch enemy and it sounds like that is somewhere that you will be um it is also fitting if they seek redemption that the order of the cleansing flame is the perfect place to find that indeed i think that uh from what i know what little i know of your order i think that um these nine women would find um comfort in their final days to uh to serve under you that is a very wise uh sorry i'm losing my brain here because it's so That's early right. uh, <laughs> um uh that is a very wise suggestion you have brought forward i i do believe this would serve our purpose well and we, we, it would help these sisters as well with their uh, atonement. Do they have a mistress of repentance or shall Sister Dawn serve as theirs? Uh, no. I, the, my intent would be that um, Dawn would carry the lash. Very well. You don't mean that... Do you mean that figuratively or literally? No, no it's literal. Shit, yeah, it was like literally. <laughs> it's, it's, so a... you would know, Dawn, that the the mistress of repentance basically judges them at the end of every battle and says whether their sins have been cleansed or not. And if so, they get to go back home. And if not, they serve forevermore. I mean, when I, when I say it's rare that they would ever be, um, uh, like released from the, from the oath of repentance, it's like when it happens, it like often the women that it happens to go on to later become saints once they die, because it's viewed that they must have done something so incredible to have earned their way back from because a lot of them they don't they, they believe they're beyond redemption they believe that the only 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 in death can redemption come mm -hmm. um but they you know there has been times <laughs> where uh, and to be honest in many cases sometimes you know um either they will like because they can literally end their own oath they can say i believe i've redeemed myself enough but no none of them ever would because they have been trained to believe that they are completely fallible, like most people. In so this is this is like the equivalent of them getting like the Medal of Honor or something like that, and yeah, then they would right. be okay. So like you know, they... yeah, it, it wouldn't be like oh, you we won this one battle. You three, you're released from your oath <clears> now. It'd be it'd be more like okay, you know, you just killed a thousand orcs and you know, um, bought bought this one person back while losing both your legs and pulling yourself with your arms through the swamp. I release you from your oath of repentance, you know. These are the perfect people to, to literally be like, no, I will martyr myself for this group. They're like, okay, if yeah. you make it back, we'll, we'll talk about this whole thing you got going on, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I if like meet once I've met with your friend later on, if you meet me, I will provide you with the I'll give you the lash and I will brief you on the sisters as you need to know. Very I'll well. let them know to begin gathering their what what few things they carry. Now we just need to give them jump packs. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. And they'll be terrifying. If you, if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna get some jump packs. You're in the best place to get that sort of shit right now. <laughs> They're under, they literally are under equipped. <laughs> it, it's not actually the best place. Yeah. It's like the worst place. I mean, we're going to a they're, remote they're military a... outpost that's like, we're begging for ammunition. Will anyone from command listen to us? So you're like, we're not getting, we're we're not getting, getting we're ammunition. Gonna, we're going to get the best we're special jump packs equipment. laying around. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want jump packs? You know, we've got tons of them. Ammo? No, we don't have any of that. <laughs> What's that? You'll trade one. You'll trade ten bolt rounds for a jump pack. Oh, no, okay, I That's get the feeling that they're train. probably not very well stocked out here. <clears throat> so before she separates off to deal with Nero and Dorm respectively, anything else you want to say to her as a group? Mm. We sing no, her a sea I... shanty. We all harmonize. <laughs> it's crazy how good we are at it too people are very impressed yep. alright then AP Yeah. you separate off with the Palatine she takes you off to like a, a private chamber to talk yeah alright so Nero just says um, well I don't have much to confess I'm afraid I'm a fairly faithful person as far as I can tell and Recently, someone looked at my soul and told me my soul was pretty pure, so I thought that was great. I just have a a slight problem <clears throat> of um, authority. I uh, I've seen things in service to the Inquisition, and they give me questions about the. righteousness of certain inquisitors the actions that they take i don't have the wisdom or the capacity to understand if they are truly in the nature of the imperium or whether they are simply the needs of a man or a woman is it right is it necessary to Inquisit the Inquisition, I suppose. Mm. If you see something, do you do you say something, and who do you say it to? So, you raise some points here that have troubled many acolytes throughout time or throughout the service yep. of the Inquisition. Yes. Uh, I specifically the day, chose a point to yes. see how uh, how this particular James uh, character would respond. Yes, yes. Uh, the uh, Inquisitors themselves are, of course, as you said, men and women. They are subject to the fallibilities we all experience. Uh, and there have certainly been cases where Inquisitors have um, gone to a dark place where they shouldn't go. Uh, there's also the idea that often things that seem to be bad for our limited understanding um, can have a great effect that we can't potentially see something of great benefit to the Imperium. Uh, the, the God Emperor has allowed these people to rise to these positions would indicate that they have some part in that plan, even when it may look like they are taking the Imperium somewhere dangerous. Often, or sometimes, once the fullness of other time is understood, that can be shown to be part of, you know, the the, the plan of him of him on Earth. What I will say though is that there have been many cases where inquisitors themselves have passed judgments of um, discommunication upon their own kind. Uh, warrants have been issued to strip inquisitors of their rights and to name them traitorous excommunicado. Uh, but such thing is only done by other inquisitors. If you believe that your inquisitor out there is not this one, no. Well, if you believe any inquisitor is 
taking that path, then the right person to take it to is an, another inquisitor. I've certainly been asked to do things that I have questioned the right of only to find out after I did later on that there was uh, a true justice in the action, uh, that it was part of a greater good. Um, other times I've been asked to do things, terrible things, and I've never known whether what I've just done has benefited the Imperium or not, but I have faith in the organization, in the ecclesiarchy, and of course in the God Emperor, that my part here serves a purpose. You've given me much to think about. Thank you. All right. She subsequently catches up with Dawn. Um, and when you enter, she's um, white, she's currently like winding up a, a whip um, into like, you know, it's like a, 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 into a coil so it can be, you know, carried. I would like to give you um, the lash for uh, this penitent squad. Remember that the, uh, this is a sacred item. Um, it is not a weapon designed to uh, fight our enemies, but rather it is intended to castigate the flesh of those who seek redemption so that um, they may understand their, their mission through pain. The agony they endure remind them of their guilt and it helps them to throw themselves against the enemy in the struggles to come. How often this is, am I required sorry? to flagellate these people? Uh, normally before a coming battle, but you must use your guidance as to when you feel that they need to be reminded properly of the guilt that they carry. These are not, this is not a weapon. This is a tool of faith. Now, the other thing I wanted to call to your attention is that one of the sisters in the squad, um, Sister Katine, has taken the oath of ablation rather than the oath of repentance. So she does not seek repentance for an act that she has done. She seeks repentance for cri the crimes of her family. Um, they will not atone for themselves, and so she seeks atonement on their behalf. Treat her as you would any other sister repentia, but just keep in mind that the guilt that she carries is not her own, but her whole family's. Um, I, I don't want to say spare her the worst, but just remember the oath that she took is about, not about what she has done. Was she born into a generation of guilt or is this something that her current generation in, uh, committed? So she, so all, all of these women served as full, full ordained battle sisters before their, before what happened to them. So she later discovered what her family had done after she left her birth family. And mm -hmm. although I've never asked her about it, um, whatever it was, was, foul enough that she felt she could no longer wear the ceramite armor of the battle sisters and instead took the oath of ablation. If we require these sisters to don armor and jetpacks in order to be proficient in battle, are these against the credence? This is not, that's not the way of the sisters repentia. They they have cast off their armor and the trappings of faith, uh, so that they are thrown into battle pure, given only what the emperor provided them and a blade. Will so, they be stark naked or will robes suffice? <laughs> so, Dave, for your benefit, um, and you can if, I can tell you pictures, but what they basically wear is just like scraps of clothing. 
and hoods uh. over their heads that have you know, their eyes cut out. Um, their special rules allow them to effectively, their faith works as an equivalent to armor as a shield. So it prevents them from, um, you know, taking the you know, the worst of uh, attacks. Yeah, you know, spoons put it into um, into uh, the Discord. So you can see what they wear. Interesting. Okay, let me take a look. Oh, so they're like they're kind of like berserkers then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very much so. I see. Okay. So these uh, these girls won't be chasing me in the sky then, unfortunately. That is okay. We've literally never seen you fly around in the sky during combat. <laughs> she did. Oh, she she did she said, battle. Uh, yeah. I have place done it lots of times, yeah. actually. She's covered big distances in battles, like gotten yeah. into melee combat where things would take a lot more. She did the... Uh, I mean, Reserve what I'm saying is she's not like hand up in the sky, like pew 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 pew. I'm shooting you from up here because I'm a Mandalorian from the Clone Wars. Pew 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 pew. Well, and jump packs What's... don't don't let you fly so much as yeah. they let you leap big, large distances. Boba Fett would like to work with you. This is 40k though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mandalor he, he Mandalorian is everything. <laughs> And jump pack, it, it, again, he's a jet pack. It's different from a jump pack. That's true. So the other thing I'll point out, by the way, is that Repentia is serving within the Inquisition, yeah, as they believe they are. They can still, they don't have to walk around in their, in their vestments with chain, with you know, their officials all the time. They can still wear armor and clothing while they're doing day-to-day -day stuff. It's when they actually go into a battle. And I don't just mean like, you know, fight breaks out and we get involved in a fight. When they actually go into a battle is when they should don their vestments. And be and be flagellated and uh, driven, we driven to, about to go to call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right into a battle. battle. They yeah. wear their uh, tear away armor for when the battle actually starts. <laughs> <laughs> get the get the uh, the the carapace pants with the with the tear yeah, crotch like the buttons yeah. on the side. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is so much better yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> never said it wasn't uh, it'll take them 24 hours to get them all together ready, ready to transfer to your ship by the way that's perfectly fine yeah. well they didn't have a um, a berth for us here Lord Captain we might have to send some shuttles down to pick them up yes okay well, I can go. fly back and forth not a problem sure. let's go then I think we could also just stay on the, the gun cutter Nero's, Nero's just like looking at the gun cutter, looking at the abbey, then remembering his nice room back on the ship with grilled partridge, and he's just like, "No, Adrian, shoulder on the hand, uh, hand on the shoulder." We How long is the trip back to the return back to the vessel the, immediately? The hand collapses to the hand. Well, it's say so what's about about fifteen minute drive back to the um, gun cutter, then probably about a one hour flight up. Oh, okay. Adrian, I spent what? the last 14 days locked in a room with you. I want to go back to my own room and have a nice <laughs> dinner. You, you, you did that to yourself, Nero. No, you I did, did that, that to him. Yourself. Yeah, I turned to Pierre and said, he did that to me, and you <laughs> did it to yourself. It was we, in order. We follow quarantine funny. procedure around here. I thought it was hilarious. Great. I'm glad everyone is amused. I'm getting on the gun cutter. <laughs> So I think we're coming up to a good point, like in terms of a good ending point. Plus, uh, we might if I finish a bit earlier, but I thought what we might do once again because you got there, that big jump all the way back over the other side of the sector to maybe work out the the roles for that now. So once again, I know going into the next session, do I need to plan for? Uh, uh, we show up three well, years later. <laughs> I would say before the oh, jump, ship has been turned my... inside out. We're oh. floating in space. <laughs> we go oh, my... uh, as long as the tide of iron gets through the atmosphere, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, someone kick it. Also like, also like the idea that we take so long in space that all of my newly appointed self-flagellating troopers have all decided that you know what, we've served enough time. We're heading home now. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So before we so do the one, make thing, the, the, way, the, the one thing you do get with them, by the way, is they all come with their original sororitas armor and weapons, just in case, you know, because they, they still belong to them as such. They've just been 
stripped of them for now. So the idea would be that if, if whatever they are, they are, you know, given repentance, the... like, you, you're going to need to go and, go and get that stuff, you know, so. Okay, so oh, the first battle would be like, all right, you're good. Now put on your armor. Yeah. You pack. <laughs> Listen, we do things a little differently here in the order of the cleansing flames. So oh, I'm sorry. It... All right. All right. Now that you've done that battle, go through this flame. If you're out, then you're good. Yeah. That's it. If... Sorry, there's an extra step into that. Uh, I think before the jump here, he's going to send a message to Zerb if he can. That... Yep. Pretty sure he gets. It's just a saying that. Uh, the the station here needs ammo i can get it for them if you can just send if if you can just give me the compensation to purchase said ammo for them okay then um yeah my only issue is though that you're about to leave this sector of space and fly elsewhere so you probably won't be back here for some time that's fair we sh I'm sure we can arrange things with him. This man is literally like, if you could deal with this problem in the next five to ten years, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, I mean, essentially, what I'm saying yeah. is, he'll like he'll like say, "Oh, look, I had some stuff on the way, but sure, you know, if you if you want to get get stuff there yourself, then um, I'll pay you for that." Yeah, I'll get the. I, essentially, when I make the trip back here, I'll get the stuff and then bring it to them. James is like, it's okay. going to be a long time before you're back. We're going to be like. Boom! Call stun Sanofia the same episode. Boom! We pick up gun. We pick up ammo on Sanofia. We're back. Boom! We're now we go to the mausoleum world. Perfect. We're done. So my question then is: Is the plan now to go to Sanofia or to go to Kalth first? Kalth. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Kalth. Let's go to the battlefield. It's time to do some okay. space battle. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's let's do some uh, let's roll some dice. Are we doing the space battle and tabletop sim again? Um, I don't know whether there's going to be a space battle. We'll have to just wait and I see. I thought they had some defending Corsair ships. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, they got orcs. They got orcs. So uh, which which um, way are we going? Sorry, I'm. I'm so you are so right now all the way up at the top called Kulth. You are there on the on the mm -hmm. map. And you're you're, you're yeah. going from the, there to up to there. So we're just doing a straight as the crow flies sort of jump there. That's right. Yeah, which is why I'm going to do warp rolls because. Mm -hmm. um, are we yeah, literally just going to be like? A, are we, are we literally just going to be like, all right, we're dropping this off. We're not helping anything else. We're leaving. No, now. we're going to kill them when we're at, We already promised we'd kill them when we're there. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was making like sure. We, we said we said we were going to help. I don't know if we're going to do like ground combat or do like we did back at. We could do a couple of strafing runs Listen, and, and I, a gun cutter. We have a gun cutter and Nero is literally loaded down with weapons and he's never had an opportunity to be like, all right, I kill 15 minions in one round. I just I just keep killing hundreds of people every minute. <laughs> We've never had that episode. It's literally the one thing he's really good at besides going, grr, I'm angry. Ah. So uh, we're going to start with Arthur. You can roll the first roll for Riani, okay. which is her navigator's estimate. It's a warp navigation warp test mm -hmm. which for her is a 45 okay um and at this point it's going to be a minus 10 because it's outside of the it's in the periphery basically so it's a harder thing to she nailed it no big deal oh no she didn't right. nail it no that's a minus mm -hmm. point two not a point two okay so she estimates that it'll be um about between one and a half and two and a half months to get there in oh, warp travel right okay. I say good job, Riani. That sounds really okay. short. Okay. Now we go on to um, her. You can always end up being shorter. Finding the Astronomicon. So we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to Pondo. I have the so. question: Is this the one where uh, the travel that that we can get just suddenly longer? Yeah. This, no, so this one, the... this this can affect the um, the degree of success here matter. Oh, it's this one matters for the next roll. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm thinking of when I need to do the do a better one, but I'll just hold on for the next one. Okay. So okay, so this this was an awareness plus ten roll for her. Her awareness plus ten is a sixty. So you've got uh, degree forty seven. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it will actually speed up the time. So the actual time will be two years, uh, 45 days in, in reality. You don't know that yet, but that's how long it will actually take in reality, 45 days. That's not bad. 
Okay. Charting the course. So Dave, roll me an ordinary plus 10 warp navigation roll. So her warp navigation is 45. So you're rolling under a 55, but you get plus 10 Uh, from Pondo's previous roll. Yeah. So Uh, in another plus 10 for doing it better. Yeah. So up to a uh, 75. There you go. This is the one where you don't want to fail and roll a nine. Okay, good. All good. So it's just now going to be the uh, travel in the warp. So we're going to do four sets of rolls. So Spoon, you can roll these. So okay. give me two D100s. Okay. Uh, one D100. Okay, so 77 or 49. So it can either be no event or Gellerfield fluctuation. <laughs> No event. Okay. It's a hard Second no one. event. <laughs> I don't know. Two the other more. one sounds pretty good. What, what's it? What's it? <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong with a color field fluctuation? Two more rolls, please, Spoon, for the second one. Okay. That's uh, no event or ghost ships. Again, hard no event. Okay. Well, haven't but... you ever heard of ghost, ghost balloons? Come on, man. Like, where's your sense of adventure? Third one. Do we need uh, two more D100 rolls? Yep, that's right, yep. Okay, that's no event or no event. It's pretty clear. Okay. Uh, no. oh, I thought it would be no. the other way. I was I was like sitting here going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last set of, last uh, set of two rolls, please, Spoon. Okay, a little different oh. event. So that is uh, plague, of mad- plague of Madness or Demonic Incursion. Oh damn! That none of those sound <laughs> at all good. <laughs> okay, I was so, doing so well. The demonic incursion is probably something that I can help handle quite well. I don't know what a plague of madness is, but at least with the demonic stuff, we can we can handle it. And you've got your shipwide, like I'm I'm a cool captain. Look at me go, sort of thing. So handling fear uh, is it's, probably a lot easier. The the shipwide thing is for morale, as far as uh, ship combat. No, I mean, like you got your special power that like makes it so that anyone. It's in... within my. It's one's in sight of me is the thing. So okay. unless I just have like TVs put everywhere and just you know say like, don't worry, everybody, it's just a uh, combat Wait, test. We, d- we don't have that. Yeah, I thought saying. we did. <laughs> so, so, so let me read what let me read what they both say. So, plague of madness is a general madness in, infects the crew, and without swift action, bedlam can ensue. Uh, it will target the weakest of will first, but can be spread by contact. And then incursion, uh, a demonic entity slips aboard the vessel and sets out to wreak havoc. Particularly insidious warp creatures can hide on a ship for years, masking their actions as bad luck and careless accidents. Yeah, it doesn't sound that. I think that somehow the madness sounds better. Oh, look, we've already established the ship has a strict quarantining policy that will not be broken for any reason. Okay. Even for senior crew members. We've narratively established that this fucking vessel is ironclad. This plague will be under control in minutes. Plus, plus, I mean, what could go wrong? We have a, a catechin as our, as our bosun. Yeah. Oh, uh, why would you say that? Why would you say <laughs> what could go wrong? What the fuck is wrong with you? It's the famous last words. I, I, I guess let's go with the plague of madness. Plague of Madness. Okay, we'll, we'll get to see next week how that works. Who is that the resolves. weakest of wills among our crew? <laughs> I mean, the ratings probably, you know, like the lower decks, the lower decks people, that sort of stuff, you know. It's, it'll start in the lower decks and make its way up. No, it won't, James. Why would you... Listen, it's going to get stopped immediately because of our strict quarantining procedures. We what had a whole scene about how strict they were. We have to discover it first, though, right? You have to do contact tracing. And, you know, <laughs> this is getting too real. All, all of these, all of these quarantining procedures have to be followed first before we go into the actual quarantine. Yeah, I know. At least, at least, came back and won't feel like in the warp for you, like I did coming here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, everyone can have another 300 XP. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, it's exactly enough XP to get the next thing I wanted. I now know how to drive slightly better. 
Oh, that golf cart is going to pray, be singing your praises. You know, we do have a command chimera with a flamethrower and a, I think a heavy bolter on it. Oh, we can... Uh... No, no, I can't. Never mind. You know, I can drive any ground vehicle, right? Like, I'm not just a limit. <laughs> I feel like um, Ivy should come out and add another gear to the golf cart. Yeah, I was going to say, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> Put on uh, warm tires specifically to do drift <laughs> racing in. <laughs> James, how much did you say that the uh, Inquisition agent thing was? It was 600 for us? 600, uh, yes. Agent of the like Inquisition. You want to get it too now? I don't know, maybe. Acknowledge Forbidden Lord Inquisition has come in use several times. It's It's been coming up more often now. And, and its authority like it's has worked up. out pretty well for me as well. You've just spent a whole day not correcting people whenever they call you Inquisitor. Yeah, he's, he spends it <laughs> for the upgrade. He's just like, actually, I am an Inquisitor now. <laughs> it's, it's all about being able to lie enough until you get what you need. <laughs> Because I do have Deceive and Blather, so... Oh boy. I, listen, have we ever seen you use Blather? I've used it once. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like me having like unlimited charm, and I've used it once. You haven't seen me <laughs> use charm either. Yeah. yeah. You, and, you and me are the most charming people on board, but yet, no. <laughs> I mean, Dawn's got a whip now, so that probably adds to charm, doesn't it? Mm, just don't. And a James. big robot dog. <laughs> just don't. We just went somewhere weird. Mm -hmm. I ride my bear into battle while I'm surrounded by half-naked women, and I whip them. That's right. I believe. I believe that chat earlier today said no kink shaming. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Chat saying kink some shaming weird shit. is my kink. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. got anything else for us james no no that was that was it okay all right it gives me time to take my kids to the movies let's have you do your outro first then so you can get up in no the if you need no no i'm good i've got plenty of time I, I am james i'm taking my kids to the movies tonight as i was saying i was telling them in the break that uh one of our local off the wall mini cinemas is doing a showing of the 1986 transformers the movie movie so i'm taking my children so i've got my autobot shirt on today um they don't know what they're gonna go see it they're gonna be surprised by that so uh See how that goes. Otherwise, let me see. I'll be back here. I won't be back here on Wednesday for Cyberpunk because I'll be uh, traveling, but I'll be back here next week for more Rogue Trader, episode 11. Um, when we start to slowly get back towards the main plot. Um, had a good time tonight. Thank you, everybody, for playing. Uh, yeah, not much else to say. Find me on Arthur's Discord if you're looking for me. Big Spoon, what do you got? Uh, I'm Big Spoon. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Big Spoon two two three or in uh, Arthur's Discord. Um, I'll be back here Saturday for the next episode of uh, Rogue Trader here, and then um, I think we've got some Solaris Knights coming up soon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for patrons. Uh, if you're not a patron, you can go patronize Arthur over at Patreon. <laughs> oh, you can also patronize right. me too i have yes. a patreon too we all uh, have patreons here i we're don't all soldiers now yeah i had a i had a good time tonight uh learn some learn some new things about the game so that's pretty much it okay what what'd you learn uh that the medina because i was like the medina orb that sounds familiar and then you're like oh yeah erasmus harlock wanted this and i'm like oh, we're gonna need that later <laughs> not device well come on it's it's not like we're gonna be rogue traders and we spend all our time in the imperium collecting all his dad's <laughs> stuff <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> <laughs> oh, your dad died. He scattered all of his belongings across no space. Take all your cool bros and go on a road trip to get it all back together. <laughs> well, we're actually in, you know, a heartwarming, uh, you know. No, I want to go back out into rogue space and fucking rogue some people up. I want to rob Xenoses. I want to commercial things. 
I do like the idea of a of a heist episode, though. Yes, <laughs> AP's, AP's just upset because he couldn't sell merch this episode. He had to I, give it away. Yeah, my intention was never to sell merch for those people. Yeah. But uh-huh. here's, the, here's the extent of what the heist episode would be like. So you want the orb, and you're with the Inquisition. Yep. Well, okay then. <laughs> we can't, no, no, we can't let them know that we've stolen the orb. I mean, essentially what I could do is say, hey, Zerb, I need this to do the stuff with the Tyrant Star that you need me to do. Can I have it? Like, sure. Cool. Thanks. That's... I got some. I got some that, real. That's not how that conversation would go. Just yeah, so I often find yeah. that asking Zerb for things gives you unintended consequences <laughs> and more problems than you, you started with. You don't say. Maybe this. I still that, want that's not the, the way to be put. But yeah, no, I, want... I got that in mind. Say, hey, I need this orb. I'm just want to ask for permission to take it. I don't need to kill any of them. I just need to take it with me. I got some real uh, Astartes, the uh, like the that three D graphic. Oh yeah, I know what series. you're talking about. Yeah, I got yeah. some real real Astartes vibe from this yeah, orb where thing. Where the Inquisitor connects to it and is like, ah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and the yeah. whispers. There's lots of whispers yep. from yeah. there. Yep. I, I also I just want wanted the... to say it's like I want to go touch it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, I was, I was, I was going to say. You dumb? You, you dumb? <laughs> I was like, going to oh, say, man, oh this God. is floating nothingness. We should touch it. <laughs> I, right. When she mentioned it, it had something to do with Harlock. I was like, I wonder what happens if I touch it. The whole world becomes made of peppercorn. <laughs> Every molecule becomes That's nice peppercorn. Color. That's a very nice color. Would recommend it if you look. No, for I literally corn. mean every molecule becomes an actual fucking peppercorn. <laughs> And then I don't think it's painted peppercorn color. Back. I mean, the whole planet is a fucking peppercorn. <laughs> you have to crack it open to get the delicious ground pepper. Oh, oh, Pano, let's do your outro. Again. Holy fuck. I am Pondo or Pondo the Mad. Uh, you can find me on YouTube or Switch slash Pondo the Mad. Or you can find me here with, uh, I guess, Solaris Nights, whenever that comes back out. Again, I think we're scheduled. I'm scheduled for 50 Thursday. So. Don't ask me. It's not like I know these things. It's Thursday. I have it, sca- I have it marked. You know, it's always Thursday somewhere in the world. That's what they say. But yes, yeah, so right. I'll also be here for uh, Saturday nights for Rogue Trader. Uh, at some point, eventually, I'll have a video come out. I don't know when. It's when I've been uh, using what free time I have uh, that will slowly be going away in the near future. Ah, come on. You'll, you'll make time for things. I would, t- I would say congratulations to you in person. I, I said to Cotton, but yeah, congratulations, Pondo. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I, I caught the huge like slant uh, block that you did with the AP's joke that he was trying to do. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was funny because you're about you started saying it, but Glima was going to say it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Hey, can I tell you something, AP? I realized this week, by the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. It's, it may shock some people, you know, in the show or in the audience, but I'm pretty good when it comes to game rules. Normally, you know, I'm pretty much a you know a rules person, and, and you know, I don't want to say that that AP has made the occasional rules mistake in his channel, but you know, occasionally it does. But here's the thing: I've, I've, <laughs> no, keep going. I've, I've always said that I believe that story trumps rules, and that while I don't mind pointing out, you know, it, it, oh, by the way, the rules actually work this way, I don't get stressed about you know the, if, if the game flowed well and was fun and it kept it was a story i don't really care whether the rules are right or wrong so this week i was watching i watched two games this week i watched one of your open Ender steel games ap um this the last one on the on the space platform okay. so i think i'm still a full full episode behind okay. um and, and yeah i saw yeah there, there were little rules mistakes here or there a lot mainly a bit to the fact obviously first time using a lot of those special rules about zero gravity but at, at no point did it pull away from the uh the show i thought it was always really well dealt with that thing at the same time this week i watched some of jesse cox's star wars rpg and i gotta tell you every time he fucks up a rule for me it's like sitting in a, in a concert like listening to like you know a classical concerto and then the fucking cello makes a bad note and it just stand like it's, it's all you can hear at that point in time is like you know yeah that 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 just ruined this whole experience for me so i, I think that you know Why? what does he do exactly 
Uh, okay, so the classic example for this is that, like, and this is a game which has been running for the past year. So the game has been out for a long, long time. Having a character in the game who's a Force user, but has never actually bought any points in any of the Force powers or any of the Force talents, but this I know is like, exactly oh, where this is going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, whenever you want to do something for, you want to move something with the Force, you want to, you know, make someone do something, just roll a Force dice. That's all it takes. You don't, need, you don't need the power. Just and it's not even roll a force dice. So it's spend a force point and then make a roll, like a skill roll that would be relevant to that particular, you know, uh, thing. Like, oh, you know, you want to move something. Okay, make a coordination roll and spend a force point, and you can now move something with a force. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's an example. There were other things as well, but that's just like every time I, it just it grates. To on be it's, fair, it's, it's though, such an egregious. You know, to be fair, though, I do think the force rules for Force and Destiny are kind of really unnecessarily convoluted. But just a you know. cock keeps it casual, is what I'll say. I really appreciate <laughs> being on his shows for Among Us. But those uh, because I, when I he's say... not there, it devolves into memory and killing me. <laughs> I, I, I will say though, the the biggest problem I have with with GMs who who just do that sort of stuff is the people that do invest all of their points into making their character specifically a particular way they don't get the benefit of having their character be rewarded in a narrative sense because then the stuff that they built their character to do just gets hand waved so it's like i don't know it's kind of annoying in a weird way i would say but i'd say it's a tale as old as time so, so what I'm what I'm saying, AP, is that when yeah, you I know, make I appreciate mistakes, what you're you, saying. You do, you do it well. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, when I make mistakes, it comes off as cool and casual. Yeah, you 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 fuck up very gracefully. We're at least consistent. Like, like, anytime you want back out of compliments, I'm always here for you, AP. So. <laughs> oh, somebody would else? say that your speciality. Got anything else, Pondo? No, I got nothing else. Dave, let's see your outro so we can put you to Betty Bye. Hello, it is me, your friendly neighborhood Polish Australian man. Um, so, it's your strangely enough, something to uh, do with not, sausage? Not <laughs> smelling dog shit. That is my power. <laughs> um. So right now it is a it is a balmy negative twenty two degrees here in Warsaw. Fahrenheit um, or Celsius. Celsius. Okay. Obviously. Um and it is a very interesting year because uh I've we've never had snow this much snow in 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 my time, small amount of time that I've spent living in Warsaw before. So that's good. I, I enjoy snow. I just wanted to say that. But if you guys want to go check out my shit uh, at, Kinky Fri- at Kinky Fridays on Twitter, uh, we just released the OST and full version of Pieces of My Heart on Steam. You can go buy that. And we have a new game called Sapphire Safari, which is a uh, Pokemon Snap game, but for consenting adults, um, which has a prototype available now on my Patreon. And some other things like that, and we've had a lot of a lot of really good, uh, you know, feedback for that game. So people really like what we're putting down, and that makes me happy. So this, um, this week I actually came across a, uh, a video of Dave from ten years ago, Babyface Dave giving an interview at San Francisco ten years ago. You know, mm-hmm, it, was, mm-hmm. it wasn't quite as quite as surprising as hearing Pondo's um, prepubescent voice doing um, doing Skyrim on his cello very early, but. Um, <laughs> Wait, was that I... the was that the no, the uh, Noz three Noz three D something like that? I think maybe design design three, design three. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. man, holy shit, that was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, I've been around for a long time doing video games. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, it's me, Pondo. Gonna try out a new username, <laughs> Pondo the Mad. It's pretty no, edgy. I had I use... Hey, hey, large it's me, goals. Sephiroth. Three <laughs> XX, three XX. I'm, I'm thinking of changing my name to Pondo the Mad. No. Underscore AZN. AZN. Oh my god. You know, I um, remember that when everybody was putting underscore AZN at the end of their names. 
Yes, I, mm. I specifically wanted to avoid doing any of that. So, um, oh, what was I going to say? I've, Throw gaming I've at the end of your name makes everything easier. No, you just got to put uh, uh, at Twitch at Twitch TV. Oh, uh, TTV. Yeah. TTV. I'm still, I'm still oh, trying yeah. to find AP Gaming Fake. So <laughs> I might make it. No, you need to make AP Gaming Fate. For I, your fake game. Fake, I do fake, fake game a lot. If you guys want to hear some early shit of mine, though, I have, uh, I have podcasts. I was gonna say go we're gonna listen to, to like 2008. Henley uh, reads game uh, fact articles. <laughs> no, uh, here's how to beat SNES games from game fact. I actually, I actually <laughs> looked up some of those earlier videos of mine, and they some of them have like millions of views. Like it legitimately freaks me the fuck out. I was like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> people are going back and trolling through because i used to do a podcast called the modcast which was about you know modding news like back in 2008 all the way up to 2012 and it, it did it wasn't popular at the time of release I, I will say that much but nowadays it is incredibly popular so or at least you know people have gone back and found the archives of it and are watching it a lot so i don't know what happened there um I actually, I actually had a uh, uh, a streamer come up to me the other day, and he's like, "Hey, man, listen, I use you as a meme on my stream, and I've been doing it for years." And I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" He's like, "Yeah, from I take I took a line from your mod from your modcast, and I've been using you as a meme on my channel for absolute fucking years." And we did a stream together, like a couple uh like two months ago where he was just like so what are you doing with yourself now man come on tell me what's all the gossip i'm like look you really don't want to know what i'm doing with myself right now <laughs> did you tell did you tell him you wanted royalties for for your use of uh he has thumbnails with me on it in his youtube channel like he's taking pictures from my linkedin and facebook yeah man that's you gotta you gotta get paid for that shit that's creepy I don't think he makes money. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have to protect your brand, though. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have a brand anymore. <laughs> Intellectual oh, property. Man. All right. We got anything else? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. All right. Um. Yeah. So we're not playing Cyberpunk next week, right? That's correct. We'll yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's my, my fault. We'll be playing Raft instead. Ooh, Raft. But we'll be back with this, where we'll deal with madness, and then, I don't know, land on a planet and fight a lot of works. Who knows how that's going to go. I thought we were going to have a space battle, but now we're not going to have a space battle. Look, I, I can, I'll talk to you about it in the week. In the week, maybe, it's, if you want to do it, we can do it. I don't mind. I can... Yo, fuck space battles. Me and my homies hate space battles. Okay. We'll do a ground battle then. Yeah. James will have to manage okay four that. simultaneous ground battles where each of us lands with our small elite team. Adrian is a, Adrian just does like gun cutter stuff. He's just like, oh. wee, gun cutter go burr. <laughs> no worries. I'll just make sure that, uh, that all, the, all the enemies have fear and that way three of the four groups run away. <laughs> Pond that's hard bro. basically yeah. has like a has like a tea party at the top of the hill where he can survey all the battlefield he's like mm, yes i'll need to practice my orc during the week as well like like getting my orc language going all right what does the orc language sound like 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 they're like from yorkshire yeah yeah I thought it was Umes, we <laughs> gonna smash them Umes. Space Marines Is Space like Marine coming <laughs> Listen if you play the Space Marine video game for more than 10 minutes You'll have heard the word Space Marine in Orkish So many fucking times You wanna die You start charging at Orcs They're all like Space Marines <laughs> Uh, the one that got me as a kid growing up was um, Company of Heroes. Every time you'd click an ally builder, they'd be like, all right, dicks in the dirt, man. Like every single time. Without fail, that's what they would say. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Do, do you know, Do you know, Dave, what a glottal stop is? A glottal stop? No. Glottal stop. Glottal in, stop? In, no. in language, it's, it's a propensity for dropping double Ts from words. 
and it's it's very common in like northern parts of Britain, but in some parts of Australia as well. So rather than saying butter, you'd say butter, you know, or that sort of thing. Shooter, drop drop out the consonant sound right in the middle. That's what. So that, that, that's my usual orc practice would be to you know focus on getting my glottal stop right. Yeah, I don't. Know. My little brother had this problem where he he's he's fully Australian, but for some reason he would say free instead of three. Mm. I don't understand how the fuck he picked that up because he went to the same school as me and everything, but he still says free. Like even to the day, he's like, oh yeah, that'll be three dollars and three d five cents. I was like, god oh, damn. Stop it. Yeah. 3D5 set. That doesn't even D5. sound right. Yeah. I, I can see th- free, but not the, the, the 3D5. That, that sounds like you force it. Hey man, I don't I don't make I don't make the stupid rules of his brain. I don't think even him <laughs> he makes the stupid <laughs> rules of his brain. I guess that's fair. Uh, I'm ready to sleep now, Arthur. You may turn it off. Oh, okay. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> Oof, that was a weird stream end. <laughs>